Bray's user profiles might sound confusing at first, but I promise you they're not as bad as they sound. In this video, we'll go over the three types of user profiles, anonymous, alias, and identified, and talk briefly about the Bray's SDK in marketer-friendly terms, and much more. What's up, everyone? My name is Al, I'm founder and consultant at Fornow Marketing, and welcome back to our channel. Before we get started, if you have any questions, whether you are currently using Braze or considering using Braze, please feel free to reach out. You can find these addresses and more in the YouTube description below. Today, we're going to talk through user profiles, which is a very important concept that every team will have to tackle at some point. So let's get started. The first profile type we'll talk about is anonymous profiles, and they look something like this. This user is literally anonymous. We have no personal information about them, no email, no phone number, first, last name, nothing. And here's how an anonymous profile gets created. When a user visits your website or your app, your engineering team may have set the backend logic to initialize the Braze SDK. So what does it mean to initialize the Braze SDK? First, the Braze SDK or Braze Software Development Kit is a virtual software kit that Braze provides to their customers. It's not a physical hardware kit, but imagine that Braze gave us a toolbox of all these useful tools that we can use for the marketing team. And in this virtual software toolbox, we have the capability to track user engagement, send in messages, send push notifications, create user profiles, and much more. And to initialize the Braze SDK just means that we've activated the Braze toolbox on our website or on our app. And as soon as the Braze SDK is initialized, the SDK will start collecting user information from our website or from our app visitors. And that is how my anonymous profile here got created. I have the Braze SDK initialized when a user lands on fornowmarketing.com. So as soon as the user visits the website, an anonymous profile like this one will be created. We can start tracking custom events. We can see some device information and their session information. If we open up the Chrome console, there's a lot of things happening in the background. And one of these is the Braze SDK being initialized right here. Mentioned, notice that we can actually already start to track custom events like clicked home, clicked services. And that's because the Braze SDK is already initialized on my website. So we have access to the Braze capabilities like tracking custom events. I can even track custom attributes or send an in-app message to my website visitor. And in some cases, anonymous users can have email or phone number added to them. For example, if we use the email capture form through Braze and use that capture form to write the email address on this anonymous profile. But what defines them as an anonymous user in Braze's context is that they do not have a primary identifier, AKA external ID or user ID in Braze's context. So typically when a user makes an account on your platform, they are given a primary ID or an external ID. And that is the point when a user is no longer considered an anonymous profile. But until we have that assurance that this user is part of our user base, we call them anonymous profiles, even if we might have a little bit of information about them. By the way, if you ever hear your engineers talk about what's called the change user function or method, that is the process of adding an external ID to an anonymous profile. The backend uses the change user function to set an external ID to the anonymous profile. So to summarize, anonymous profiles are created by the Braze SDK. They are users who have not been given an external ID yet. Moving on to alias profiles. So you can think of an alias as an attribute on a user profile. It's not quite an external ID, but it's still some type of ID or an alias that we can attach to a user profile. And here are some examples. Let's say that you have an email newsletter capture form embedded on your website that is powered by a third party software something like this one on our blog.fornowmarketing.com website. Or you just launched an on-site event and gathered email addresses from prospects in person. And you now have a handful of emails and you want to email these users from Braze. These users don't have anonymous profiles because they weren't captured by the Braze SDK. In this situation, we create alias-only profiles in order to email these users. And alias-only profiles look something like this. Braze automatically takes the front part of the email address and uses it as the user profile's name. And notice we have no device information, no session information like we did in the anonymous profile example before. 
That's because this profile was not created by the SDK. All we have about this information is their email address, and they're not connected to the Braze SDK at all. That means that most likely we will not be tracking further data on this profile. And the only reason this profile exists is so that we can email them and to try to convert them into creating an account. It's perfect for prospect use cases and email capture newsletter form drip campaigns. And if you click user aliases, you can actually see the user alias name. And many times we use the email address as their alias name. Quick thing to keep in mind is that just because a user's alias is set to their email address does not mean that we can send them emails. We have to actually set their email field as their email address also, which is right here. And it's possible that we choose the email address as their alias name, but it doesn't get set as their actual email address field. And in that case, we will not be able to email them, even if we have their email address as their alias name. Earlier, I said that an alias is pretty much an attribute. So it's also possible that an SDK generated anonymous profile like this one can be given an alias also. And of course, if this anonymous profile later becomes an identified profile, that alias will remain on that identified user profile. In some cases, it may be helpful to add an alias to an anonymous profile to later identify or map new data to the user alias. And that's because Braze recognizes user alias as one of the identifiers. So it's a good way to keep track of user base who may not have fully created an account yet. Adding an alias to an anonymous profile can only be done via the Braze SDK. So you'll need some engineering support for this. You can also add an alias to an identified profile, and that is possible via the API. So this option is a little bit more flexible. And finally, our happy state, identified profiles. The main thing that defines an identified profile is that they have an external ID or user ID that serves as their primary ID. And this primary ID or external ID is a company generated, meaning it's not brace generated ID that usually serves as the primary ID for all their platforms. So ideally, this is the single ID that this user will have across all the company's tech stack like Segment, Salesforce, Amazon S3, et cetera. And when a user signs up for your platform, this is typically the state when they're given a primary ID. If you remember from earlier, in Braze's context, this is done by using the change user SDK method to assign an external ID to a user profile like this one. However, it's also possible to create identified profiles via API or CSV. So for these profiles, they won't have any device information, but they can still have custom attributes, custom events, email addresses, and much more. And depending on your team's use cases and workflow, you will choose the route that works best for your team. Most cases, SDK created identified user profiles like this one are the most robust because you have device information and session information, but I've seen plenty of teams go with the API created identified user profiles. And CSV imports are mostly for one-off use cases. Many times we see email addresses being used as an external ID and Braze and pretty much the whole tech industry does not recommend this approach as email addresses can often include typos or be easily switched by the user. Also, we wanna to try to obscure any identifiers if possible. So most teams use a randomly generated ID that's a mix of numbers, letters, and hyphens. That's it for today. If you have any questions, please share them in the comments. We're happy to help. If you learned something from this video, please subscribe for more awesome Braze videos in the future. Thank you for watching and see you next time.